it is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three. By thy long grey beard and glittering eye, now wherefore stopst thou me? The bridegroom's doors are opened wide, and I am next of kin. The guests are met, the feast is set, mayst hear the merry din. He holds him with his skinny hand. There was a ship, quoth he. Hold off, unhand me, grey-beard loon. Left soons, his hand dropped he. The ship was cheered, the harbour cleared. Merrily did we drop below the kirk, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. I met Louisa in the shade, and having seen that lovely maid, why should I fear to say that nymph-like she is fleet and strong, and down the rocks can leap along like rivulets in May? And she hath smiles to earth unknown, smiles that with motion of their own do spread and sink and rise, that come and go with endless play, and ever, as they pass away, are hidden in her eyes. She loves her fire, her cottage home, yet all the moorland will she roam in weather rough and bleak, and when against the wind she strains, oh, might I kiss the mountain rains that sparkle on her cheek. Take all that's mine beneath the moon, if I with her but half a noon, may sit beneath the walls of some old cave or mossy nook. When up she winds along the brook to hunt the waterfalls. I heard a call. There's little I can do, Mr. Wordsworth. Your sister is strong, but her strength works against her. Her recovery after these attacks has been progressively slower. This time she seems unable to restore herself. I'm afraid there's little hope. If it were not for your nursing, she would have gone long since. Oh, don't say that. No, please. If she were to depart, my life would be robbed of a light to a degree that I have not the courage to think of. This laudanum mixture is the only relief I can give her. Without the opium it contains, the pain will be unendurable. It will wear her out. I will see that she drinks it. William? Yes. Mm. I heard the rain falling thickly. I was calling your name. I heard you. Your brother will sit by you, Miss Wordsworth. Rest and yet more rest is my prescription. But I'll see you tomorrow morning. Morning? Is it still? I'll leave you in the best possible hands. My wife will see you to the door, Doctor. Make sure she has plenty of hot broth. Now you must...
drink some of this, I insist. Don't fret, William. Don't fret. Just talk to me. Read me some of your poetry, that's the best tonic. You must have heard every line a thousand times. You wrote them all down. You must know them far better than I. I've been remembering so many different things in our lives, jumbling them all up together. It all became a single dream, all bound together by your poetry. Whether I was just Louisa, Emma, Emmeline, or just Lucy, you've put all my life into your poetry. You have put your life into the poetry. It's ours, not mine. Ever since we were children chasing butterflies. And bird nesting. Oh, how miserable I'd have been after Mother died if it hadn't been for you. Mm, I don't remember us bird nesting, Dorothy, but I do remember you taking me... Don't call me Dorothy. Dorothy is a name used for strangers and forgetting your own poetry. Behold, no, I was beneath, teasing. Behold the, Emmy. Behold beneath the leafy shade. Emmy, of course I remember the, the sparrows nest. The blue eggs together laid. Oh, me, the chance discords. Gleamed like a vision of delight. I started seeming to espy the home and sheltered bed. The sparrows dwelling, which hard by my father's house, in wet or dry, my sister, Emmeline and I together visited. She looked at it and seemed to fear it, dreading or wishing to be near it. Such heart was in her being then, a little prattler among men. The blessing of my later years was with me when a boy. She gave me eyes, she gave me ears, and humble cares and delicate fears. A heart, the fountain of sweet tears and love, and hope, and joy.